Hello and welcome to Big Jim Gaming, where you get a new video every Friday, plus bonus content during the week, just like this one. And I'm going to talk to you today about the Sony PSP, or more importantly, the forgotten Sony PSP. Now, when you think about the PSP, PlayStation Portable, to use its full name, you'll be thinking about either the 1000, 2000 or 3000 models, just like these. And they're the ones that you'll most commonly find available. The 1000, also known as the Fat Model, the original launch title one. The 2000, which many think still has the best screen. And of course, the 3000. A little bit lighter. I think a little bit better screen, but truthfully, between that and the 2000, not a lot of difference. Comes in some nicer colours. You might even think about the PSP Go. Download only, which is absolutely useless now because the PlayStation Portable Store is a long forgotten thing of the past, but it's still very popular with home modders. But there is one more. One more that actually was a really good idea, and in true Sony fashion, when it comes to handhelds, well, they cocked it up completely actually. They launched it at the absolute wrong time. Uh, but I have managed to get my hands on one. The PSP. E1000 Street. When I say it's rarer, you still can find them at a reasonable price, but not many people have heard of them. So let me show you all about it. And here we are with them on the table. Now I've got above it my PSP 3000, just to use as a bit of a comparison. So you'll see that compared to this, it has a matte finish. The buttons along the front are one smooth piece. However, don't be fooled into thinking they're touch screen. You can still feel when you press the buttons, it is a physical button underneath, but it still looks cool, nice and modern, nice matte finish, and they've taken away the bright buttons in exchange for darker ones. Also, this only came in black or white, with white being the rarer one. If you can get one of those for a good price, go for it. The button layout is exactly the same with the single thumbstick, the same buttons apart from, if you look on this one here, you've got the brightness button just here. No brightness button here. To do that, you have to go into the settings, which is a bit of a nuisance because to alter the brightness, you have to go all the way along to your settings. You have to go down to your power saving settings and then alter your screen brightness that way. Not the biggest problem in the world, but not as convenient as a button. Still, if that's the only problem you have with your game console, you're having a good time, aren't you? The screen quality itself is actually, I think, perfectly on par with the 3000. If I just set them out there. I don't see any issue with it whatsoever. In fact, I've got a couple of games in the UMD. If we move it along just to here, and then it will show you the preview. Now, they are different games because I don't have the same one twice. But if you look at that, that is a very good picture. As is that. I would say the screen quality is exactly the same. Weight-wise, tiny bit more, but that's no bad thing. And the only other difference you will find here, when you flip them over, that's the standard with the UMD door that you'd be expecting. Flip this one over, and it's the whole back. To open it up, you simply pull it like you normally do. You take out your UMD, you can see you've got the little guide in here. I'll give it a shake, sometimes that's easier. And there is your battery, which is only a tiny little 800 mAh battery, as opposed to the standard 1200 in the 2 and 3000 and the 1800 in the 1000. However, According to the internet, that will give you the exact same amount of playtime as the batteries in the other consoles, technology moving on and becoming more efficient. The only other compromise on this one here, this is your only speaker. It is a mono speaker. I find the sound quality to be pretty good and a pretty decent volume as well for a handheld. But in the 3000, you've actually got stereo speakers, one on each side, just here. There is no doubt, as much as the sound is still good and it is perfectly enjoyable on this, there's no doubt in my mind that you will get a better quality of sound from the 1, 2 or 3000 with the stereo speakers. So, 
And with this stripped down approach, apart from the fact it looks a little bit more modern, why did they launch it in the first place? And that is the whole thing. You see, Sony launched this as their equivalent of the original Nintendo 2DS. There it is. Now, you might be more familiar with this one. The 2DS is a stripped back version of their 3DS, which they sold at a lower market price. It didn't have the clamshell folding facility. It didn't have the 3D facility. But you could still play all the 3DS games on it and enjoy them. It was a way to get into the 3DS console on a budget. That was the idea of this. They stripped out the stereo speakers. They took away a couple of physical buttons. They even took away the ability to interchange the batteries, although you can do it if you're handy with a screwdriver. That's another video. It was an idea that this would get people into the PSP who weren't already at a lower price point. But they launched it, get this, they launched it in 2011 at the same event where they launched the PlayStation Vita. So you're at an event announcing your brand new handheld, the successor to the current one, saying how much better it is, how much more wonderful it is, why you need to go and buy one. But you can also get another PSP if you want as well. <laughs> That was just the start of their mistakes with their handheld campaigns. We'll go into the Vita another time. They launched it in PAL territories only, which is largely Europe. It takes in some parts of Africa and a few parts of Asia, but largely Europe. And surprisingly, it wasn't actually very successful because people were out buying Vitas. Or one of the 80 odd million PSPs which were sold worldwide, they already had one. That's why it didn't get sold in other areas. Well, at least not directly by Sony, of course. You can still get them in other areas now on the second-hand market. It is PAL exclusive. Now, there's nothing wrong with them testing it in a market. I would imagine the PAL market and the NTC, about the same, and that's where they chose to do it. No problem there at all. And, of course, it was available in Japan, because why wouldn't it be? It's a collector's piece. That's the only reason you would own one of these now unless it was the only one you had and you got a good deal on it. It's for collectors. It was never launched where it should have been, which was immediately after the one, or maybe 2000, so that you had the option. You could go out and spend over 200 quid on this, or maybe 150 or even 100 pound on this. They were two years ahead of Nintendo's idea of a stripped down cheaper console, but they launched it at the end of the lifespan. Why? And that's why you've probably never heard of it. Now, it is rarer to find this than the two, three, and 1,000 consoles, but you can still get them for a reasonable price, 50 pounds upwards. So it's a little bit more, but not a lot. If you can get one for less than 50 pounds, do so, because I personally think it's a good investment and these are gonna go up in price, just because of rarity. And it's fantastic to play on. I know I said that the, my only personal problem is with the fact it's got the mono speaker as opposed to the stereo speaker, but don't let that make you think it's got bad sound. It really, really doesn't. In fact, it's got very good sound. It's just not as good as the stereo one. But let's face it, when these were launched, the idea was that this was going to be the Sony Walkman of the future, where you watch television on it, you listen to music on it, you did everything on it. So it was made for headphones. I think if you're really into the PSP, and I personally am, it is my favourite handheld, it really, really is. I challenge anyone to find a handheld that's got a better, more adult library. And when I say adult, I mean more mature games like 15 and 18 pluses, I don't mean... Ugh. I think it's really worth having one of these in your collection. Not just as a curio, because it is really very usable. I would say, personally, this is better than the 1000, and on par with the 2 and 3000. The only difference is, I can see that being a better investment in the future. It's the PSP you've never heard of. Thank you for your time. I hope you found that interesting. If you want to check these out, have a look on the internet. As I said, they go for reasonable prices still. 
You might even choose to get it as your only PSP if you're just getting into them. There's nothing wrong with it at all. Definitely better than the 1000 to play on. My opinion, of course. Only my opinion. Check out Big Jim Gaming for more cool videos. I am quite new to YouTube. I know I'm very far from perfect, but I'm doing my best. Hope to see you all soon. Bye-bye.